In this module, I want to introduce the concept of semantic change, change in meaning. And I'm going to use an example of the word literally in phrases like, I was literally gutted, or I'm literally dying for a cup of tea. It's a use of the word that's often condemned today as being incorrect, largely because it seems to mean the opposite of what it should do. And so if we trace the word back to its origins, then we can see that it really means precisely to the letter, exactly, not figuratively, metaphorically, which is how it's often used today. So does that mean the modern sense of the word and its use today is wrong? Well, if we go back to the etymology of the word, then we can see it derives from the Latin word litera, which means a letter. And so what it really means is letter by letter. So if we wanted to be really pedantic about the meaning of the word, then it could only really be used of something that you do letter by letter perhaps copying a text out by hand could be done literally, but otherwise everything else is a kind of metaphorical extension. And if we trace the history of the word, we can see how we've got to the modern use today. So what we find is that in later use, it starts to be used to reinforce a statement, which is actually true but where the word literally is functioning as a kind of intensifier. So Pope writes in the 18th century, every day with me is literally another tomorrow. So it's true, the literally there is redundant semantically, but it's performing the function of an intensifier. A further development of that in the 19th century sees it being used to intensify statements which are metaphorical in some way. And what we see there is the beginnings of our modern use, where something that is not literally true is being defined as if it were. And this is the use that people condemn today because it seems to reverse the sense of the word. But if it's the case that uh, the modern use is not true and it is not uh, recent, in fact we can trace it back to the early 20th century, then neither is its prescription. In 1926, in his classic Dictionary of Modern English Usage, H.W. Fowler, the grammarian who wrote the, this um, best-selling, highly prescriptive description of the English language, picks up on people using literally in precisely this way. So he complains, citing a newspaper article in which a climber is described having uh, managed to uh, 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 get up a cliff face, literally clinging on by his eyebrows. So this is something that's been around in the language for a long time. People have been complaining about it. But notice that those prescriptive complaints and prescriptions have had no effect on usage. So despite even 100 years ago, um, a best-selling prescriptive guide to English grammar uh, censoring that use, um, it's still uh, widely used today. Usage carries on um, regardless of those prescriptions very often. But is it wrong to, for a, um, a word to change its meaning in this way? Well, we could just characterise this as semantic change, albeit semantic change which has almost reversed the meaning of the word, so that it now seems to mean its opposite. But it's not the only word that has uh, changed its meaning in this way. So if we think about the modern English word cleave, for instance, which can mean stick together, but it can also mean uh, pull apart. Or uh, the word sanction, which mean, can mean to impose a penalty on somebody, or it can mean to allow something. So these are what we call 
auto antonyms or contronyms, words which seem to also mean their opposite. And what typically happens in these cases is that they become specialised in some way. So the word let, for instance, goes back to um, it can mean to allow something or it can mean to prevent something in Middle English. But by modern English, the word let meaning to hinder uh, has become associated purely with legal usage without let or hindrance or with sporting uses. When somebody gets in your way on a squash court, you can call for a let. And so the, it, the language has ways of regulating this use, which means that although it's confusing potentially, um, we can normally understand um, what's being meant. So people often complain today about this word use of literally in that it means that it becomes impossible to know whether somebody really means something or not. But how often when you hear somebody say they are literally dying for a coffee, do you wonder whether you should dial 911 or not?